Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm your host, Eugene Chan. Our guest tonight is Mr. Jet Swajang Yok Seng, who needs no introduction as he was voted Hong Kong's most popular legislative councillor during his eight years as president. Mr. Jiang was actively involved in the preparatory work for the setting up of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, and he was the second president of the Legislative Council for eight years before retiring in 2016. He was also the founding chairman of Hong Kong's largest political party, the Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong. Mr. Zhang is currently the convener of Think Tank Hong Kong Vision. Welcome, Jasper. Thank you very much for coming tonight. My pleasure. And as you know, our seventh legislative council was voted in like eight days ago. And as you know, this is the first major uh, legislative council election after the improved electoral system. And Mr. Xia Baolong noted the diversity of the candidates from the ages and birthplace because some of the candidates were born and raised in Hong Kong. Some are being mainlanders who have settled in Hong Kong. One person is born in Taiwan. And there are also those foreigners who have taken up the Chinese nationality. And of course, there are a young person down to age 25, one of the youngest candidates. Unfortunately, none of them were elected. elected. That's exactly what I'm going to ask you. <laughs> so, do you think the wider representation has been achieved? Well, we all know the main purpose of the uh, improved uh, system uh, is to make sure that Hong Kong will be governed by patriots. Right. right? So the system actually bars from uh, taking part in the election anyone who doesn't satisfy the criteria for being patriotic. Right. So if you're saying, why uh, hasn't any non-patriot mm -hmm. be included uh, then, of course, that's exactly what the, uh, what the new system is for. Right. But, but given that, I mean, even within, within the uh, uh, realm of patriotic politicians in Hong Kong, of course, there is a still a wide variety. Right. So, so, so mean, it does achieve the wider representation, in your view? Well, no. I mean... You don't agree? It, it, it depends on, on what you mean by being wider in representation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, some of the uh, rather well-known politicians, uh, people or a sizable proportion of our voters used to support in the past, mm -hmm. uh, were absent right. from, from this election. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, maybe, uh, there is a certain part of our community uh, who are not represented. Right, OK. And also, since you move on that area, we know that at, at the end of the, the 90 legislators, only one centric, so-called centric person was elected, and the 89 were pro-establishment. So as you just mentioned, not a wide, depending on your classification or the definition of wide representation. So how would the vacuum of those missing from the past be filled? Well, if everyone who satisfies the conditions of being patriotic is, I mean, by definition, pro-establishment, mm -hmm. then of course, I mean, even, even uh, the, the, the single uh, person you refer to. Yeah, the central person, right? yes. Well, he, he is patriotic. Right. And I, I doubt very much whether you can exclude him from the uh, pro-establishment camp, because actually, even before, join, before taking part in the election, I think he held some very, uh, very important posts yeah. in uh, what you may call pro-government uh, institutions. Mm. So, I mean, if pro-establishment is identical with uh, being patriotic, mm -hmm. then obviously everyone uh, elected in the uh, recent election mm -hmm. should be pro-establishment. Yep. Since you have been a long time legislator, I mean, over tw nearly 20 years, um, do you think having this more homogenic sort of a mixture of legislators, do you think they will change the way it supervises the government compared to a heterogenic before? 
Well, let us look at, let us look at the facts. Mm -hmm. The fact is, um, in the last um, five or six years, um, when there were rather uh, radical mm -hmm. uh, factions of the uh, non-government or non-establishment camp right. in the LegCo, uh, very often the LegCo simply could not function properly. Right. Hmm? So they, if, they, they, if they, 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 I mean, I mean the white paper. We, we're going to discuss that later. Later right? on, yes. The white paper on Hong Kong's uh, democratic uh, progress pointed out, and and it's it, it's the truth. It pointed out that on a num a large number of occasions, the LegCo was unable to function right. because of the antics of the uh, anti-government camp. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I mean, when you say when you say will. Uh, the, uh, we, are we going to see improvements in yes. the way the Let's Go uh, will perform its duty? Well, we have to wait and see. Right. So, so what you're saying that the likelihood of filibustering or counting quorum and not having meetings, that will be very unlikely. Then how about, as you know, some of the candidates are of mainland background. Do you think that's going to change the way they will advise the government? Ah, I think... Uh, it should be an asset, a very right. valuable asset for the electrical to have members uh, more closely uh, who have close ties with the mainland. Right. Who know the mainland. Of course, they have to be permanent Hong Kong uh, uh, residents. Or right? they won't be voted in, yes. Right. They don't, they're not qualified. Otherwise, they won't be qualified. Right. right. But, but as Hong Kong residents, if they do have close ties with the mainland, if they do know what's happening in the mainland, say, much better than the uh, average uh, citizen in Hong yes, Kong. Yeah. Uh, that would definitely help. Because, right. because what I want to see uh, is closer cooperation and more uh, exchanges mm -hmm. uh, between the ex-co, uh, between the LegCo and the mainland. Right. Both the government and the non-government bodies on the mainland. Right, Jasper. Also, another fact I've, I've noted that is in this new 19 members, a lot of them are young, younger members, or, or the majority actually are newcomers. And they've actually said in, in public that they were definitely, not only, I, I mean, they were saying people were questioning whether because they're patriots, whether there's going to be one voice. They said, no, we were definitely going to um, um, check, make sure the check and balance are right for the government. If that's the case, we be concerned, some of the legislators, because they're new, they want to perform, which is a good thing to see, that they will argue for the sake of arguing. I don't see anything wrong in that either. Right, right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, now it, it all depends on how the government and perhaps the, uh, the majority okay. uh, camp in the LegCo, uh, how they deal with the uh, views, mm -hmm. the voice of the minority. Right, okay. Now, the, when, when I, I believe one very important um, principle in um, what, we may, what we may call parliamentary democracy mm -hmm. is that, that while the majority must have their way, the minority must have their say. Right. Now, one reason why the minority, the opposition in the past, resorted to very uh, yes. violent means, very radical uh, ways oh. uh, to stop the electrical functioning. Right. was because they, they, they felt that their voice was not heard by the government. Right. Okay. So if, if, if you're saying by saying that, that will answer my next question to you, because the party you founded, DAB, has 19 legislators, nearly about over one-fifth of the, 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 the legislators. So in a way, party politics should still be there, but the minority will, will have a say in this, in this time. My party, the DAB, is still a long way from being a majority party. Yes. It's one fifth, over one it's, fifth. It's 19, it's 19 seats out of 90. Now, that proportion, just about 20% of, 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 uh, of the whole legislature, mm -hmm. cannot, of course, qualify the party as, as a majority party. It's far from that. But it's the largest party. It, it, is, it is the largest, but... Still, it is a very small 
proportion of the whole let's go. Right. So, okay. I mean, I, the, the, the one thing I think the government should, uh, should be worried about is that we still have a very much fragmented uh, right. legislature. And it is very difficult for, for all the legislators to sort of uh, come up with a consensus to any, on any, any, any public policy. Right. Just before we go to the break, I don't want, we have only a minute about left. I want to ask you the last, last question of this part is, being a legislator for nearly 20 years, you are the chairman, and with a new council, what do you expect them to do? It's because they are going to have 90 people, it's going to take double the time, because there are like 43 per establishment um, legislators, it's going to take double the time for the government to convince them on uh, or anything contro with controversy. What will be the thing that you will advise the, the government to consider to best make the best use of these legislators? I believe the new legislators, especially those who do not belong to any, any party or, or political group, I would expect them to group themselves together. Mm -hmm. uh, because as long as you remain one single individual, there's very little you can do right. to sort of uh, uh, influence government policy. So I believe they will do that. They mm -hmm. will group themselves, well, in natural ways, mm -hmm. into, um, say, groups of 10 or 20. In that way, the government may find it easier to okay. sort of maintain a dialogue okay. with them. All right. We'll, we'll go for a break and don't go away. Welcome back. We have been talking to Mr. Jasper Jiang yuk Singh on the recently elected Legislative Council and what we can expect them to deliver. Let's move on to discuss the recently released white paper by State Council and its implication of the development of democracy in Hong Kong. So, Jasper, as, you, as we all know, that the, the white paper was released right on the next day after the um, Legislative Council election. Before we I'm going to ask you what is the implication. I want to bring up another some comments from internationally. Um, Follow the uh, election last week. There were joint statements by G7, EU, and the Five Eyes, that is USA, Australia, Britain, Canada, and New Zealand, criticizing our election, saying that the, all the changes has eliminated any political opposition and expressed grave concern over the erosion of democratic elements. How would you ex respond to that? Well, I, I don't see anything new in those uh, criticisms. Comments, right. They have to do it, right? And my impression is, well, they were doing it because simply, you know, they had to do it. Right, okay. They, 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 couldn't, they couldn't come up and say, look, uh, yes, Hong Kong has carried out a very successful uh, election. Right. And, right? Yes. Because they were supporting, because they were supporting some of those who, uh, you know. Not running this time. Yeah. Right. Who, who, who were against, against right. the whole thing, right? right. Yeah. But, but if you look at those comments, I, I, I must say, actually, they're rather mild. Okay. And, and as I said, nothing new. Okay. So, if, since you say that, I mean, they mm. have been doing that for quite some time. Yeah. And looks like people in Hong Kong before, they never thought Hong Kong is on the political chessboard, but definitely we are. Mm -hmm. How much longer do you think this is going to happen? It, it depends a lot on, uh, on the international uh, situation on China's relations with, with the West, especially with the United States. Right. right? As long as uh, the United States and its allies, well, want to get to something to, to sort of uh, embarrass China or to, mm -hmm. to, to hit China, then Hong Kong would definitely be, uh, be there. Right. With regard to white paper, we had the first one in 2014 and the second one coming up on the 19th, uh, 20th of December that, that enti entitled Hong Kong Democratic Progress Under the Framework of One Country, Two Systems. Why has it come up at such a critical time or special time, right the day after the election? Well, obviously, the white paper was drafted before the election. Yes. Long before the election. I, I, I guess the white paper was drafted shortly after the decision to um, um, improve the electoral system was made. Because, because the Chinese government knew there would be, you know, dispute. Right. 
Hmm? The, 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 the Chinese government would have to explain both to the people of Hong Kong and to the international world why the um, electoral system uh, was, was uh, inadequate, mm -hmm. why there were loopholes and mm -hmm. why uh, these new improvements had to be uh, put in place. Mm -hmm. So the, I, I, I would think the white paper was there already. But, but the um, central government refrained from uh, publishing the white paper uh, before the election mm -hmm. because I guess they didn't want the white paper to sort of, I mean, uh, uh, confuse or, or, or distract people's right. um, attention from the election itself. Right. So, so they waited until the day after the election. Right. Um, in addition to that, some mm. people, I'm sure some of the viewers by our, by our television will say, but they hear many comments from amongst uh, casual discussions that Hong Kong now would be very much like a one country, one, one country, one system, that uh, people feel. And also, the, the UK has accused the nation of being in breach of the Joint Declaration. What's your response to that as well? I, I hope uh, the uh, <clears throat> Chinese government, instead of uh, repeating uh, the remark that uh, the Joint Declaration is no longer... Uh, Enforced. It's only a, a, a piece of paper, historic uh, yes, document. You mentioned that, yes. Uh, I, hope, I hope the Chinese government uh, will come up and say, look, we are abiding straightly to the Joint Declaration. Nothing that has happened in Hong Kong, nothing we have done to the system in Hong Kong is uh, in breach of the right. uh, Sandu British Joint Declaration. And I, believe that, I believe that's the case. Yes. Uh, right? Yes. So... Yes, yeah. Jasper, since you mentioned about the white paper, uh, I mean, that, that means the universal suffrage of the chief executive and eventually the legislative council will go ahead. And does it mean one man, one vote? This is a very, the, the most important point I, I found in the white paper. Right. right? The white paper uh, reiterated the central government's position that the final goal of our constitutional development is still universal suffrage. Mm -hmm. Universal suffrage in electing the chief executive and, the, uh, and all the seats in the let's go. And of course, it is one person and vote, universal mm -hmm. suffrage. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you, you know, I think the most important thing, most important point made in the white paper is the recent changes, the improvement to the electoral system in Hong Kong actually paves the way for uh, going towards uh, this final goal of full democracy. Yes. Mm? It provides the necessary conditions right. for realising that goal. Yeah. I think that is most important. Now, Jasper, since the improved electoral system, we had our election committee, we had our first um, major legislative council, and the, the next one is the chief executive election. Right. I've counted, it's 87 more days on the day of election. Right. As of today, there's no one has said they're going to come out to run. Um, why? And does he or she has enough time to run in a proper election? If you, if you look back, if you look at the, the way each of the chief executive uh, was uh, selected in the previous cases. Selected. You, 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 find, that, you find that there is no, there is no rule. I mean, of course. Uh, you may say that uh, the uh, basic law has already, the NX1 to the basic law has already laid down the rule. We know yes. that there will be nomination by a, uh, a, a specified number of uh, uh, election committee members, mm -hmm. and then the whole committee will, uh, will elect. But we all know, I think both you and I know, that even before nomination takes place, the central government has made the decision. And how and when? The central government makes that decision. Nobody knows. No one can tell. Look at the four previous cases. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they're all different. That is why I believe if anyone today tells you, look, so-and-so will be the next chief executive, or these two will run, will be the candidates in the chief executive uh, election, it, it's only a wild guess. Right. Jasper, I'm going to ask you. Last week, when our chief executive, Mrs. Caroline, was in Beijing, she was praised in public for containing the pandemic and fostering economic recovery. Does that mean that they approve her good work 
and running as an ex-CE? Look, before uh, Mr. Xi Wai announced that he was not going for a second term, he was openly praised by, uh, the, um, by, the, by the central government, including uh, the, uh, the, the President Xi Jinping himself. Right. All, all right. right. And, and, and Very lavishly praised. Yes. And with, <laughs> with, with Mrs. Lam, they also went on to urge her to make efforts on improving people's livelihood so the vast majority of residents can have a greater sense of gain. But that's something it's, which the chief executives should always do. Right. right? So, that, so those two comments doesn't really mean very much, in other words. Well, those two comments mean that, yes, the central government, uh, including our, 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 our leaders, are satisfied mm -hmm. with the work of the SAL government and the chief executive. Mm -hmm. That's it. I mean, but, but history tells us that even when the central government is very satisfied with the incumbent uh, chief executive, um, they can have someone else in mind for the next one. Right. So, Jasper, <laughs> as you just mentioned, I mean, if we, if, we, if we refresh our memories, in the last 24 years, um, all the three chief executives we had, they worked very hard, and according to the basic law, they can work up to two terms, and so far, no one has actually met the two terms for whatever reason. And I'm sure all manifestos by the chief executive takes time to to, to materialise. So, for Mrs. Lam, shall we encourage her to go for a second term so that all her, her plans will, will become, become a reality? But th this is one factor I believe uh, Hong Kong people and the central government should consider when, uh, uh, when, 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 they are, when they are weighing the uh, pros and cons uh, for uh, the current chief executive having uh, a second term. Right. This is always something we have to consider. Right. But so, obviously there are other there are other factors for the central government and Hong Kong people to consider. So Jasper, in the last last part of the show, being there yourself, um, who would I mean rather than asking you who would be the what would his the first job he or she should do, do we have a suitable candidate? Do you have anyone in mind? Of of course, of course there are, well... Would you want to well, name them? Well, I can, well, as far as I can see, I mean, Hong Kong doesn't lack political talent. Right. We do have people uh, who are very competent okay. and very devoted to Hong Kong. Okay, right. Right. Yes, it has been our pleasure to have Mr. Jester Zhang giving us an overall assessment of the latest political scene. And thank you, you all for watching and have a good week and good night.